Hey, what's going on, everybody? I am Ant Pruitt. Hope y'all are doing well. I'm unbelievable as always. And boy, do I mean that. Uh, today is July 9th. Yeah, July 9th, 2020. And it's the Canon R5 and R6 announcement day. I got up bright and early this morning to check out that event online because, of course, you couldn't attend any of these events nowadays. But I wanted to... Um, you know, get a crack at, at what Canon was going to announce as soon as they announced it. I didn't really want to catch it in some sort of uh, other press release from another source, if you will. Nothing against them, but I just wanted to see it for myself. Now, over the last several months, heck, over the last year, we've had many different rumors about what Canon was going to announce on the new camera body standpoint. Moving from the world of DSLRs to mirrorless cameras. If you're unfamiliar with the difference between mirrorless cameras versus DSLRs, I will put a little link to a video up here somewhere. Yeah, somewhere right along in there explaining the differences. So just click on that and check that out. But Canon is moving into the mirrorless side of things. They already had a couple mirrorless bodies from 2018, 2019 with the EOS R and the EOS RP. And they were they weren't well received. I like the EOS R okay. It felt fine. It had its little quirks, but those things later got better because of firmware updates. The US RP was the entry level full frame mirrorless camera from Canon and most people absolutely hated it when that camera really wasn't designed for them. It was designed for the people that are just trying to get rolling with full frame and mirrorless. Ended up being a really nice camera for the pricing. So now we have these new ones, the R5 and the R6. Now the R5 is is pretty much the, the elite version of this camera. The R6 is just a step below and not by much if you ask me. Uh, you're looking at it, you have the, the 45 megapixel sensor on the R5 versus 20 megapixels on the R6, which in today's standards means absolutely nothing. Megapixels don't always mean uh, better in these uh, in cameras nowadays. So please take that in mind. Uh, but then you now have dual SD card slots on the R6 and dual slots on the R5, but only one of them is an SD. The other one is a CF Express card slot. Card slot, which is really expensive, but it's a lot faster card for uh, transferring data. The R5 allows you to shoot uh, up to 8K video resolution. The R6 does not. It only allows you to shoot up to 4K, which is still plenty of video resolution. Um, I, I wrote a blog post on it. I will show it to you here on the screen. You can all check that stuff out on my site, antpruitt.com uh, slash blog. You'll see it there. And it'll have all of the extra specs and extra details. And as a matter of fact, I even have a couple of different videos at the bottom from the folks at Canon and folks at Adorama and other people that I trust and follow. Now, with that said, which one is for you? Hmm, it depends. Uh, I really, really would like to have the R5 for my arsenal, uh, but it may be overkill for my arsenal. Uh oh, looks like I'm out of focus. Focus. The R5 is definitely a beast to have. Uh, I would like to have it just from the whole future proofing standpoint of it. Why am I going out of focus again? Let's see. Do I need to move a little bit closer? What's wrong with you? Focus. There we go. That says I have focus now. All right. Anyway, um, yeah, the R5 is, 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 you know, the elite one, if you will. And it's probably something built more for uh, uh, the high end video shooter uh, shooting uh, um, music videos and things like that and cinema and whatnot. I don't need to shoot 8K, but it would be nice to have it. 4K is totally fine. So that's why I said the R6 would work for me as well. But still, it's just something about, you know, building ahead for the future and investing more so for the future. Because who knows, that 4K may be looked at as uh, 720p two years from now. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. But that's something to consider. It just depends on what your use case is and what your needs are. Uh, 
the R the R five pricing, you know, going if you spec it out with the extra kit lens, it's going to cost you almost six thousand dollars, I believe. Uh, I got it on the website. No, it's almost five thousand. Yeah, almost five thousand for that thing. That's a lot of money. The One DX Mark three is going to cost you six thousand dollars. I think it's sixty five hundred dollars. So you have to consider what are you doing? What are you going to get out of this thing? On the other hand, the R6 is going to cost you about 3500 bucks. That sounds a little bit more reasonable for me, um, for my budget. But again, I, I don't know. I want to go both ways. Which, uh, but, and of course, I can't, I can't afford going both ways because that's, hmm, that's a lot of money for some cameras and lenses. Huh. Oh, well, we'll see. I don't know. Canon also announced some other um products today they announced a couple different lenses and they also announced more uh more printing updates and new printer technology and all of that stuff looks really really good but i'm more concerned about the actual camera bodies i'm glad this thing is these things are here i'm glad that the one of the big specs on it is the autofocus points are now all the way across the sensor oh and not necessarily just clumped right into the middle of the sensor do you all know how big that is oh it's Oh, that's so key because a lot of times in my experience, I want to focus on something that's slightly off center in the frame and you can't do that with the current Canon bodies because the autofocus points aren't over there. So you end up setting the focus point in the center of the frame and then you have to shift and recompose and hope that you're still able to get that focus locked in based on the previous focus point. Hope that makes sense. Anyway, that's big news for me is just getting autofocus points all the way across the image sensor. Big. All right. I'm going to shut up now. I got some more work to do, but I just wanted to get this video out because it was fresh on my brain and I'm pretty excited about it. But now I got to figure out a way to get this camera at my house. Huh, where's my bank account? Mm, it's not looking too happy. Oh, well, anyway, thanks for watching the video. Thanks for uh, liking, sharing, subscribing and all that good stuff. And also make sure you're checking out my other podcasts, uh, Hands On Photography over on Twit TV. If you want to learn more about getting started in the world of photography and also check out my other tutorials right here on this channel. Thank you all again. I will catch you next time. Get on out there, create and dominate.